This is a special 28storms.com severe weather update on this Monday afternoon, January 28th, as it looks like we have a multi-day severe weather episode that could begin as early as later tonight into early Tuesday morning. This is the latest day one outlook issued by the Storm Prediction Center. This is valid through tomorrow morning, and you can see that the general risk area for thunderstorms extends all the way from the Great Lakes down into central Texas, but there is an overall slight risk for severe weather over central Oklahoma, and this risk is centered near Oklahoma City. As we turn on the day one tornado probabilities, 2% is fairly low, but you can't rule out an isolated tornado or two across this area. And here's a look at the wind probabilities. This is going to be the greatest threat late tonight into tomorrow morning, and also the risk of marginal severe sized hail is also there, especially across central Oklahoma extending northeast into far southeast Kansas. The National Weather Service office in Norman, Oklahoma has also written up a brief synopsis. They say that scattered severe storms could develop between 2 a.m. and 8 a.m., with the main hazards being hail up to the size of ping pong balls and a few damaging wind gusts up to 65 miles per hour are possible. The better chance for severe storms will exist mainly from 8 a.m. through noon out across central and southeast Oklahoma, mainly from Seminole southward. Meanwhile, the Tulsa office is also monitoring the threat. This is their most recent updated graphic for late this evening into the early morning hours. And in addition to that overall severe weather storm threat, there is the low risk of tornadoes extending as far north as southwest Missouri, including the city of Joplin. In terms of the timing for the Tulsa area, we are looking at the greatest threat for severe storms between 3 a.m. and 10 a.m., and the threat progressively shifts more toward the east into Fort Smith and Fayetteville, Arkansas, as we go on into the noon hour on Tuesday. As we turn on the latest radar, not much is happening out across the central and southern plains, but the latest surface analysis from the Hydro Meteorological Prediction Center shows that we are in a warm air advection pattern, with the warm front already extending as far north as northern Kansas, and we do have a weak dry line extending from Kansas into west Texas, but no convection is expected to fire along this dry line until a cold front catches up to the feature late tonight into tomorrow morning. We can see to the south of the warm front, we have surface temperatures already exceeding the low to mid 70s as far north as central Kansas, and those temperatures are approaching near 80 degrees, and in fact they are in the low to mid 80s out across Brownsville and southern Texas. Also, we have surface dew points on the rise. We have nearly 50 degree dew points as far north as Iowa at this hour, and they are well into the low to mid 60s out across Oklahoma in central and eastern Texas. The latest visible satellite of the nation shows that we don't have much to talk about, although you can see the low to mid-level instability on the rise along with that moisture, as we do have increasing low to mid-level cloud cover out across the central plains, but there's not much on the enhanced infrared, as there really is no convection to speak of just yet. However, convection will be on the rise as this mid to upper level disturbance begins to progress more toward the east out of the southwest United States. As we turn to the latest precipitation output from the NAM forecast model, it does not generate much, if any, convection up until the midnight hour, but around midnight it is starting to break out some shower and potentially some thunderstorm activity near and just to the east of I-35 along far northeast Oklahoma into southeast Kansas. And as we go into 3 a.m., it starts to cross over into western Missouri. By 6 a.m., some of this activity is beginning to decrease, but the model is breaking out new convection across western Arkansas and south and southeast Oklahoma. As we work our way later through the morning into 9 a.m. towards noon, you can really see the focal point for convective initiation to be out across central and eastern Oklahoma and spreading into western Arkansas later on into the early afternoon hours. Now in terms of the lifted index values for severe weather, you generally want the values to be greater than negative 3 to negative 4. And as we go into midnight, you can see that the greatest lifted index values are out across far southeast Kansas. So this does line up where the model is initially breaking out that convection. And you can see the surface low starting to work its way off into eastern Iowa, but we still have the greatest instability and moisture more so toward the south along the cold front and this is where the greatest convection is expected to be into the late morning. But we cannot rule out severe weather as far north as northern Missouri, extending eastward eventually into Indiana. We are going to touch more on Tuesday afternoon's threat in just a moment, but as has been the case for the first half of the video, we are talking about late overnight tonight into early tomorrow morning. And as we resume back to our coverage of western Missouri and far southeast Kansas, there is some concern because although the severe weather threat is expected to be somewhat limited and the amount of convective initiation is somewhat uncertain. There is a lot of wind shear that is forecast to be in this area at around this time. 
This is a look at one of the NAM forecast soundings valid at 3 a.m. And you can see the very significant low-level wind shear as denoted by the change in wind direction. And we also have a very strong low-level jet near 850 millibars or approximately 5,000 feet. Those winds are in excess of 50 to 55 knots. And we also have a dry punch coming in in the low to mid-levels from 700 to 500 millibars, which is another feature that you look for for severe weather. This is what we call a hodograph, and this is valid for the same time out across southwest Missouri early tomorrow morning. And this is another parameter that we look at when it comes to the wind shear and potential for tornadoes. And every time you see long clockwise hodographs, that is the potential, or it does show the potential, for at least some threat of tornadoes. So the bottom line for folks in that area is that although the severe weather coverage is going to be limited, there is the potential for an isolated tornado or two. So there is enough reason to set those NOAA weather radios to alert mode as you sleep overnight, just in the event that severe weather approaches you. Now, more concerning is the threat as we go on into the afternoon and evening hours of Tuesday. And this is when the Storm Prediction Center has outlined a moderate risk for severe weather with the greatest threat being located out across northeast Louisiana, southeast Arkansas, and much of western and northern Mississippi. And this threat is not that far away from Memphis, but overall the slight risk encompasses a much larger area all the way from eastern Texas into southern and central Indiana. And whenever the Storm Prediction Center issues a moderate risk in two days in advance, you know that this is certainly not an event to play around with, especially when the peak of the action could come during the overnight when people are less aware of the incoming storms. And this is the reason why meteorologists all across the community stress the importance of having a NOAA weather radio. The threat will persist through Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. Therefore, as we look at the Day 3 Wednesday outlook, the slight risk continues to slide toward the east from southern Mississippi through the Carolinas and lower Virginia. Additionally, the Shreveport National Weather Service Office has updated their graphic cast, also showing the moderate risk for the same area. The primary threats are damaging winds, isolated tornadoes, large hail, and they say that some of those damaging winds could be embedded within thunderstorms and as strong as 70 to 80 miles per hour. Now, the Jackson, Mississippi Weather Office has also updated their timing for the severe storms. They think that the storms will be moving into their western zones Tuesday night from 8 p.m. through 3 a.m., then steadily shifting eastward into Tupelo and Meridian from 2 a.m. through 8 a.m. early Wednesday morning. But look at the hazards. This is what is more concerning. We're talking about winds in excess of 60 to 80 miles per hour, with the tornadoes potentially being on the strong side. Now, as we return to the latest forecast model output from the NAM, valid noon Tuesday afternoon, you can see that the warm sector is spreading into southern Illinois and far southwest Indiana, and the extent of the warm sector is continuing to advance as we go into 6 p.m. And as we turn on the Cape values, this is a measure of the energy in the atmosphere, and although the values are not terribly high in the warm sector, mostly around 500 to 750 joules per kilogram, the wind shear that we're talking about can sometimes compensate for the lack of instability. So as we look at the 500 millibar mid-level winds, we see a very powerful 90 to 100 knot jet streak exiting from the southern plains and advancing eastward into the lower Mississippi Valley. So if we compare those moderate to strong southwest winds in the mid to upper levels of the atmosphere to the more south-southeasterly winds in the warm sector, you can see what we're talking about in terms of that strong change in direction and speed, and this is the wind shear that we are mainly concerned about in terms of the tornado potential. Now we are going to take a look at the 0 to 1 kilometer energy helicity index and the 0 to 1 kilometer EHI combines both vertical wind shear and instability. So since instability is taken into account, once again we don't need these values to be overly large during the winter season to promote severe storms. Now the EHI is often used to target the areas that have the best chance for tornado threats and the EHI for 6 p.m. tomorrow is marginally high out across eastern Texas. So even though we didn't talk about eastern Texas too much in this video, you definitely want to stay tuned to the latest weather information, especially tomorrow afternoon and evening. And as we continue to progress during the overnight into 9 p.m. and midnight hour, this is when we start to become most concerned for western Mississippi, including the Yazoo area, stretching northward into Memphis. And even into 3 a.m., we see fairly high values continuing to spread east into Tupelo Meridian, approaching western Alabama, including Tuscaloosa and Birmingham. And off into 6 a.m., we see the threat continuing to push into central and eastern Alabama, more so towards Dothan. 
and then we cannot rule out even more severe weather as we go on into the afternoon Wednesday for Georgia and the Carolinas. Low-level bulk shear is another parameter that we look at, and as we start over again at Tuesday afternoon, early afternoon hours, you can see that the wind shear values are fairly high across southeast Texas and southwest Louisiana, but pretty much anywhere where you see any kind of blue colors, as long as it's in the warm sector, this denotes an area that we would have to watch very closely because wind shear values are generally strong. But what's even more concerning is that as we go into 9 p.m. and midnight, the low-level jet really starts to strengthen over Dixie. So we see that these low-level bulk shear values are going to increase. And anytime you start to look at values in excess of 30 to 40 knots on this particular graphic, this would support the possibility of strong tornadoes as long as the cells can remain somewhat discreet and you still have enough instability during the overnight hours to support organized supercell development. So this is going to be the main concern going into Tuesday night and early Wednesday morning from Louisiana on into Mississippi, Alabama, and potentially even Tennessee depending on some of the configuration of the system, give or take about six hours because we are only looking at one model presented in this video so the timing could be adjusted just a little bit but overall the models are in fairly good agreement with this type of scenario and finally this is 6 a.m. on Wednesday with the threat continuing to push off toward the east. The last thing we will cover in today's video is the latest 4 kilometer NAM high resolution simulated radar for the next two and a half days and this is just a very rough overview as to what we may anticipate Again, there will not be much in the way of action over the next six hours or so, but just before midnight, the model is starting to break out some convection across central and northern Oklahoma, spreading into far southeast Kansas and southwest Missouri as we go on into 2 a.m. And later on, Tuesday morning into Tuesday afternoon, we can expect more convection to develop further down the line, potentially with another round of action out across eastern Oklahoma. And then especially as we work our way into Tuesday afternoon, this is when we think that the greatest threat for severe weather will begin to take shape with those cells lining up just to the west of Little Rock with more convective activity developing out across eastern Texas. And then as we approach the midnight hour Wednesday morning, we are going to be closely monitoring this squall line because within this line there could be the risk of damaging winds in excess of 60 to 80 miles per hour with embedded tornadoes and any discrete cells that can form by themselves out ahead of the line will also have to be monitored very closely as these are known for developing tornadoes and especially a few of these could be strong. Now pressing on into late overnight and into Wednesday morning you can see the line of storms continuing to advance into Alabama and then into Georgia later on Wednesday afternoon. Unfortunately, we cannot go into more detail from city to city because the threat area is just too large, so all we could have provided in this video was a very general overview as to the threat situation. For more specific details on your locale, then please be sure to visit your local National Weather Service office's website, as I am sure that they will have more fine-tuned information for the area that you are most interested in. Also, as the event begins to unfold, there is no way that we can keep up with every single warning, so we cannot emphasize enough to follow the official products being issued by the National Weather Service and Storm Prediction Center. Along with that, though, we will continue to provide supplemental information at not only our website, but also our Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. So don't forget to follow us on our social networks, and stay safe out there.